back here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. It's feeding time at the zoo. All of your leaders are pulling down on the pit road. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. 30 miles an hour down pit road. Here comes our race leader. Chris Murphy's got the jack. He goes to the right side. They can change three tires, any three tires when they want to. Let's see what they decide to do here. Looks like they're going to go for the right side tires. Everybody coming down pit road. All of the top running cars in on pit road right now. Now changing tires in a modified takes a little bit of time. This is not going to be as fast as you might see in this Brink Cup series. They make a shock adjustment to the right front tire. Charlie Rudolph comes around. They're going to back him up. They're only going to take two tires, and away he goes. Pretty good pit stop for Rudolph. He's off in his way, Jack. Some tight quarters, though, down on pit road. You can see the yellow cone that has been drop kicked in front of Bobby Santos, the third's pit stop. And it was a, it's a way because Santos is in cockeyed into his pit. And what's interesting, Jackie, we're talking about will we pit, not pit. Three cars stayed on the lap track. Those three cars were lapped, and every leader pitted it. Pretty much throws our strategy yeah, right out. That's what I was going to say, Jackie. Exactly. You know, I mean, these guys, well, and I think what that was about, Jackie, was green flag laps. And these guys, when you start getting those green flag laps at the pace of 19 second laps, you know that you're going to be hard on them tires. 51 laps have been completed. So we are in, at least have completed the first third of the race. We are working through our first caution. Your leader at this point would be. Uh, would be uh, would actually be Doug Kobe. That's Richie Pillai, who I believe will get the lucky dog. Let's go back down to Ralph Shaheen once again. Jack, I want to explain why these pit stops take a little bit longer in the modified tour than they do in, say, Sprint Cup. As you can see, the bull pattern is spread way out and around. So the guys have to go way out over and try to get that wrench up in there and get those things loose with the air gun. Whereas with a Sprint Cup wheel, it's more right here in the center. It's bing, 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 and off they come. It takes a little bit longer to get that lug wrench up in there and get that off. What was interesting, though, when every and Ralph, when everybody was pitting, and this is a fairly sizable pit road at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Let's go, though, before we talk about that, let's go back and take at least the tail end of this accident. You can see. Bumper's Woody, hooked there, Jackie. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie it's like and a Woody. Demo have, derby. <laughs> Jamie and Woody have basically already come together, but the bumper, the front bumper is under the rear bumper of the, the front bumper of the 99 is under the 29, and, well, they're not stuck. They're just hung up. Well, and the, these cars got big skid rails, fans, and, and what they did was they have an opening and they got hooked. By him turning off of him, he broke loose. Really, neither car got a lot of damage there, so they both continued on. Talking about pit road being a little bit uh, congested, this is a big pit road. Big this pit and road Thompson jacket. have two yeah. big pit roads. But the guy that gained the most on this one, as we watch Richie Pillai, he is the lucky dog. He'll get the, the, the wave around. But the guy directly behind him, is Doug Kobe. Now, this is an interesting story on Doug Kobe. Kobe is a part-time racer here, and that is the 92 car that is owned by Bobby Santos Jr. What's interesting is, is that you wouldn't think that Bob Santos Jr., you know, why would he want to be racing against some car? I'll like tell you the why. The Bob Garbrino car is pretty tough. I will tell you why. When Doug Kobe was racing quarter midgets, a young Bobby Santos decided at five years old to go racing quarter midgets. Who was his hero? Doug Kobe. Doug Kobe. Payback one one time. hand washes the other. That, that's a pretty neat deal. That's a neat thing about short track racing. Whether you're in the Northeast where we are tonight at Stafford, or you're in Wisconsin or California, Texas, you know, if you've helped somebody along, Jackie, they're going to return the favor. That was pretty neat Santos doing that for him tonight. Let's go back to that series of pit stops and the end of it. I was talking about the congestion at the end of pit road. You can see how tight everybody is, but do you see how far out the V4 is? Now, there's Ronnie Silk trying to get by, but they've got the cone. Now, that cone is there for ascertaining the 30-mile-an-hour speed limit. Kobe, I mean, Kobe, Ron Silk couldn't get by because of the way the V4 was in his pit. And the other thing I also noticed there also was a lot of guys... They come in later than the guys. They line these cars up, fans, by their point position, not the way they qualify. So some guys are further up in the points. Right. They were not in the same position on the racetrack. They were ahead. A lot of conf confusion because they had to get in and not block their competitor in, but at the end result, you did. 
Got the crossover signal. That means that uh, the lucky dog will be able to pull around the pace car he has. Let's reset the field. On the inside, you see Doug Kobe in the Santos machine. On the outside is Ronnie Silk, your guy that you've had your eye on with all those great finishes. Directly behind them in the orange car, the 76, that's Eric Beers. Stefanik, after that pit stop exchange, has lost a couple of spots. He's on the outside as we get ready to go back to green. You know who's moved up? Eddie Flemke, Eddie Jr. Flemke in the Bouchard Auto Sales number 10. Rudolph lost the most. He was leading the race. He come back out sixth. Todd Zagany running in the front seventh. Glenn Taylor in the eighth car in eighth. Base car is pulled off. The field is being sent to Bob Shields, the starter. The green drops. Coming up through the gearbox, the T has haulers. Number six of Ronnie Silk works the outside, tries to hold on, makes it stick. Look at Stefanik. Stefanik in the blue car with the black and the white numerals. That 16 is trying to gain the advantage on Doug Kobe. Kobe dropping from the pole all the way back to the second position and is now in contest. Stefanik by makes Stefanik. a great move on the outside. They've got a great bite off turn two, Jackie. Comes into second and now he's chasing down on Silk. Here's where Stefanik now with some new Dr. Feel goods may want to flex his muscles just a little bit. Well, I think now that maybe he realizes that, you know, I don't have to pit. Hunt less than 100 laps to go. Trouble in turn one. Hits the wall. Not a lot of damage. Back under yellow flag. Second yellow of the evening. Lap number 58. It is the 80 car that has hit the wall. That's Michael Spini. And if we go back and you take a look at that wall, it's not the wall that you're used to, Jimmy, because that used to be concrete. Yeah. But now, thanks to the folks at the Indy Racing League, that is a section of safer barrier, and it has made all the difference in the world. We're in the second caution of the evening with 60 laps about to be completed, and Ron Silk is your new leader in the Town Fair Tire 150.